Uh, hi, I'm K.A.O. Milker. I'm the production director for Heroes of the Storm at Blizzard Entertainment. Okay, the tough question. Just tough question. All right. Uh, I saw this new Mephisto model. Yeah. And compare it to Diablo, it's very small. Why so? Because in, in Diablo game, Diablo is huge, Mephisto is huge. And in Heroes of the Storm, it's not so huge as it should be as a Lord of Hell. Yeah, you know what? It's, yeah, we're definitely bringing in this, this is our second prime evil to come into the game. Uh, you know, every time we bring in any character into the Nexus for Heroes of the Storm, we always have to balance out this, their size, their shape, their silhouette. We want to take these things because we want it, we want it to work in Heroes. Just you know, if, if Diablo was the size that we would really want him to be, even uh, you know, even Alex Straza and her dragon form is something we spent a lot of time balancing out, and we actually ultimately had to make it so that she's only in her dragon queen form for limited time because she gets so big. So that, that size is a, is a real concern in Heroes of the Storm. I think we actually got him to a good place though. So as much as he's not as large as maybe you would want him to be, his kid is super fun. He's a really aggressive uh, ranged assassin with this unique mage gameplay style that we haven't had in the game before. So check him out. At least, at least was it bigger in the beginning and then became it's, It always starts out really big. The art team starts out trying to get everything in the game as large as they possibly can. And then there's a big tug of war between art and design as we refine the gameplay and get it down to the size that we think is actually ideal for, for heroes. Okay, about his uh, abilities, can you tell us? I like it because uh, in Heroes of the Storm 2 zero, it was already fixed and it, it had become easier to notice this hidden, hidden heroes. And now you, have, you reveal uh, Mephisto with this uh, Consumed Souls to reveal it entirely yep. at once. Does it mean that uh, hiding heroes are still a problem for the balance? Yeah, you know, I don't think this was really necessarily an answer to, uh, you know, like those, those uh, cloaked heroes or anything. I think this is more about a unique ability where you immediately, as soon as you fire it off, you get vision on every hero on the battleground, and then after a short channeling delay, it does damage and it slows them. So we thought of it as a really good initiation tool, but it's also a really good finishing tool. So we'll see players using it both ways. I'm actually pretty excited to see it in their hands and see what they do with it. We introduced some changes to Panamura. Yes. Map. What forced you to do it? And yeah. it has become easier, I think so. Uh, easier to play. Yeah, so we released Hanamura last year. It was our first Overwatch Battleground that we brought into the Nexus. And it came with a whole bunch of new mechanics, things that we never had before. There were payloads in that. And actually, there were up to four payloads active at any time in the original Hanamura, which we thought was a really fun experiment. We wanted to try it. But it ended up being something that we got a lot of feedback from players and from our own, our own playtesting that at any given time, you just weren't sure what you were supposed to be doing. And that created a lot of uncertainty. And you know, here's a game that we really want the team to be able to agree on a strategy and execute on it. And so uh, we took it out of them. We actually took it out of the game entirely. So it's been gone for many, many months now. We were reworking it. We've been doing a lot of playtesting over the last couple months. So it's coming back in now. We've actually changed the name. It's now Hanamura Temple. We made some pretty significant updates to it. The most important of which is that we changed the payload to only have one active payload on the map at any given time. And that payload now can go in either direction. The teams can push and pull them uh, you know, in order to create this really fun team fight mechanic where the team fight is moving. So as that payload is moving across the battleground, the terrain, every, you know, the places that you're going to end up fighting and contesting over it really change up the battles that you're going to have. But ultimately, I think a lot of us really like team fights. It's something that all of our objectives are kind of designed to pull the teams together and make you do interesting things. But Hanamura takes that to a new extreme on, uh, you know, and does it in a way that the battle moves around. So we're really excited to get that in players' hands. I think the, the biggest takeaway is too many things going on before. Now you have total clarity of what you're supposed to do. It's all about how you're able to execute. Yeah, uh, none at this point. Early on, uh, we used Havoc as our as our uh, physics engine, but it's uh, you know we eventually phased out Havoc in favor of an in-house physics engine at Blizzard. But we still have lots of fun with our ragdoll death effects and stuff. You probably still see those things going off in the game to am amazing uh, bodies flying off into the air. <laughs> We're getting closer. We're in the 82 or so, 83, something like that right now. That's cool. Uh, well, you should expect some kind of celebration of the game. You know what? We're going to have to see what happens when we get there. I think right now each hero is something that we're really trying to celebrate a lot and have a lot of fun with. You know, the game is this celebration of Blizzard, you know, where we're bringing all these characters from all these Blizzard universes from over the years. Uh, and I think each one of them is a real special moment for us. So 
I, I can't speak to what we're going to do at 100, but uh, I'm excited to find out. Uh, so, and now we turn to this, the only question for the community side. Okay. Yes, it's a person nicknamed Bill, Bill Long. Uh, so he asks, is there any formula uh, of choosing of the new hero of the Heroes of the Storm? And is there any way on the community side to somehow affect the dev team? Hero which hero come out? Yes. Hero. Yeah. So the process of us choosing which hero will be next is uh, we take a lot of things. It's everything from excitement within the team to excitement within the community. We have this giant list of all these heroes from 25 plus years of Blizzard games, uh, and we're constantly jockeying, uh, balancing across uh, what role they might be in, play styles, the the universes that they're coming from, all these things, these factors that we take into consideration. But absolutely, excitement from the community drives us, and I think you've seen that. Uh, Deckard Kane was actually a very highly requested hero coming into the game. Phoenix was as well. Kind of go through actually all the heroes that we've released since launch. You'll see a pattern that when people are really excited about a hero, they're coming. It's just a question of when. Okay. Do you drop coin? I mean, it's way more, uh, way more elaborate than flipping a coin. It's really, you know, it's a thing about where is our passion on the team? How do we take all that feedback, all that excitement from outside of our team? How does it manifest on our team itself? And what is the team excited to do? And again, though, the community excitement fuels that in a major way. So that, that definitely influences it. Cool. I'm part of the community. My quest is, uh, uh, what's the as huge as the other uh, <laughs> uh, When you started, it was about 20 minutes. Now we have 10 minutes or 15. I just covered my experience. Our goal was always that 15 to 20 minute. That's always been our target. And battleground to battleground, that's varied. I think our average time is still right in about that 17 minute mark, even now. So you may be having some games that you're seeing go a little faster. I'm not sure what, if it's a specific battleground that you're experiencing that on. But overall, that's still our target. And there's definitely, we're not doing anything intentionally to make it faster. And we're always watching it and making tweaks along the way as well. So um, I think you should expect it to be pretty consistent. So, so I try to watch streamers from everywhere. Like I'm constantly just flipping on. I'll go onto Twitch and I'll just watch. I'll, I'll sort. I'll actually sort. I'll go to the top of the list who's watching a lot of, and I'll go down to the person that's having two viewers and kind of watch everything in between. I just like to see what people are doing in the mix. I don't have anything, anybody specific, I guess, that I would call out of that. But uh, I don't know. I, I feel like we have such an amazing community of people who are really passionate about the game, and it's fun to see how the different regions play it as well. I see a lot of different things coming out of different regions. So. I don't know. The, the streamers that I think have had a lot of success and that I've been really excited for are the ones that combine being entertaining with being educational, where they're, they're teaching. Whatever they're doing, it's not just about being salty or angry. It's about learning. And they're, they're saying things that the community can learn from and get better at playing the game and at the same time have a lot of fun watching them. So uh, that's, that's what I like to see in streamers. But I think, we, again, we have so many passionate people playing this game. I love seeing them get in there. And I think in a world like today, anyone can get on and try to stream. So I think people should do it. That's the most important part. Just do it. Start practicing it, getting good at it. Get some friends to watch it so somebody's watching it and grow from there. It's a pretty cool, cool time we're living in right now that you can do that. And people are making a living doing it, which I think is amazing. Yeah, uh, Grub Grubby is probably one of my favorite streamers, and he's been streaming ever since like Warcraft 3 and uh, Starcraft 2 and Heroes. Grubby is someone who's he's got such a positive attitude. He's not a he's not like a salty or like a bad mannered player at all. But he's even when he's losing, especially probably sometimes where he's at his best, where he'll call out why, what are the mistakes he's making, what should he be doing differently. I love that attitude. I love that you're gonna have fun watching Grubby, but you're also gonna learn from him too. So it's really cool.